My name is Hannah Boster. My name is Seth Lewis. And my name is William Mackinnon, and we will be presenting our Designing a Hand Warmer Lab. This lab is an example of how thermochemistry can be applied in a commercial environment. There's a very lucrative market for consumer hand warmers, especially in the colder winter months of the year. These hand warmers can be placed in gloves or in boots to heat the surrounding area uh, through the dissolution of a salt in a water. Certain salts release or absorb heat when dissolved in water, and this heat can be harnessed to heat uh, parts of the body. Um, during this lab, six different salts will be tested to determine their heat output after an introductory activity in which we calculate the calorimetry constant of our calorimeter. Hand warmers are commonly used in the winter to provide a quick source of warmth. Generally, commercial hand warmers consist of a plastic pouch that, when shaken, release a solid into water, producing a large temperature change. Hand warmers produce heat through an exothermic reaction between a salt and water. The total heat release can be recorded using a calorimeter. The heat of solution of each salt must be calculated with the C-Cal constant of the calorimeter. The heat released or absorbed by each salt can be determined using the equations on this page. As you can see from the first formula, it is simply the sum of the heat released into the water and the heat released into the calorimeter itself. Finding the heat released into the water is relatively simple and uses an MCAT equation. That is the mass of both the water and the dissolved salt times the specific heat of the water, or 4.18, times the change in temperature, which varies for each salt depending on how much energy is released or absorbed. Finding the heat released into the calorimeter is also relatively easy. It is done by multiplying the change in temperature, again determined experimentally, by the calorimetry constant. Now, it is somewhat more complicated to determine what the calorimetry constant is. The exact methodology for doing this will be discussed more in the methodology slide. However, the theory behind it will be discussed here. Essentially, two different temperatures of water, one hotter and one colder, are mixing equal volumes in, a, in the calorimeter that you're using. The average between these temperatures is, would be, is the resulting temperature in a perfect system, i.e. no heat released to the surroundings. However, no system is perfect and some heat is always lost to the surroundings and the calorimeter itself. This difference between the theoretical and experimental value can be determined by mixing a hot and cold sample of water and measuring its temperature after 20 seconds of mixing. The difference between these temperatures can be plugged into another MCAT equation as seen in the third to bottom formula to determine how much heat exactly was released to the calorimeter, was lost to the surroundings and to the calorimeter. Finally, the CCAL is determined using the middle equation, which is the value previously determined over the difference between the ending temperature and the initial temperature. Once all this is determined, it can be plugged back into the top equation and you can determine the heat of solution for your salt. The purpose of this experiment is to determine the salt that releases the most joules per gram out of the following salts. Ammonium chloride, calcium chloride, lithium chloride, sodium acetate, sodium carbonate, and sodium chloride. Based on this, we will calculate which salt is the most cost effective by comparing the amount of joules per gram to the cost of one kilogram of each substance. Lithium chloride is the most expensive substance by far at $68.30 per kilogram, while NaCl or sodium chloride is the least costly substance at $4.25 per kilogram. In the introductory activity, the calorimeter constant is calculated. In the guided inquiry, the heat of solution for each solid is determined and a proposed design for the best all around hand warmer is made. The predictions we made before conducting this experiment are shown here. We know the dissolution of sodium chloride or common table salt to be endothermic, i.e. there is heat on the reactant side and energy is required to separate out the two ions. This will take out energy from the surroundings, in this case the water, and lower the temperature, which when you're trying to stay warm in the winter does not help very much. 
LICL we know to be an exothermic uh, dissolution process, and there's heat on the re on the product side. Heat is released into the solution during the dissolution of uh, lithium chloride, which means that the surroundings or your hands in the winter will get warm. We think that LICL will produce the most heat because alkaline metals tend to be very reactive when mixed with water. And even though in this case it is bonded to a chloride ion, we still believe that the violent nature of these atoms will produce the most heat when dissolved in water. This lab was conducted in two steps, the first of which was done to determine the calorimeter constant of our calorimeter. Our setup was fairly simple and simply consisted of two nested styrofoam cups placed on top of a stirring plate and held in place by a C-clamp. To actually determine what the calorimeter constant was, 100 milliliters of cool room temperature distilled water was first placed into the calorimeter. Then a separate batch of around 125 milliliters of distilled water was heated up in a separate container to around 60 to 7 degrees Celsius. Then the initial temperatures of these hot and cold water samples were recorded. In our case, the cool water temperature was 22.1 degrees Celsius and the hot water temperature was 70 degrees Celsius. Then these two solutions were mixed into the calorimeter and stirred for 20 seconds. The resulting temperature was then written down and was found to be 46.6 degrees Celsius. Then using the equations discussed in the background section, appropriate calculations were performed to determine the calorimeter constant of our calorimeter. In our case, it was 18.76 joules per degree Celsius. If you would like to know how these were, this value was determined, please refer to the background section of this presentation. The second part of the lab involved determining how much heat was actually released by each salt. Please keep in mind that each of the steps detailed here were repeated six times, one for each sample of salt. First, 100 milliliters of distilled water was placed into the calorimeter. Then around five grams of the salt sample were masked out and the mass recorded. Then we placed the thermometer into the calorimeter, which was holding the 100 milliliters of water and let it sit for several minutes to record the initial temperature of the water. Then each salt was mixed into the water and allowed to stir for up to five minutes until the peak temperature was reached. This was either the lowest or the highest temperature we saw recorded by the thermometer. Then after all of these data points were recorded, the proper calculations were performed to determine the heat of solution for each salt. The results from the lab are summarized here. As you can see, the leftmost column contains the names of each of the salts. To the right of that is their starting masses. Then you have the starting and ending temperatures of each of the solutions inside the calorimeters before and after each of the salts were added to the water. The next two columns are the cues of solutions for each salt determined using the equations on the background slide and using that number the number of joules per gram of salt was calculated. As you can see LICL had the greatest output raising the temperature the greatest amount and releasing 676.35 joules into the solution, while NACL had the smallest temperature change and actually absorbed heat at absorbing 27.849 joules of energy. The implications of these results will be discussed on the next slide. When it comes to choosing which salt creates the most effective hand warmer, three categories must be applied. The joules emitted per gram of substance, the cost per kilogram of substance, and the safety of each substance. While lithium chloride creates the largest temperature change, it is the most expensive and the most dangerous, something you wouldn't want in a hand warmer. Both ammonium chloride and sodium chloride are endothermic, meaning they would take in heat instead of emitting it, the opposite of a hand warmer. While sodium acetate is the safest, it produces the least joules per dollar, something less ideal for someone trying to make a profit. Sodium carbonate creates the second most joules per dollar, but is the second most dangerous. On the other hand, calcium chloride creates the most joules per dollar and is safe when in solution. Based on this, the most effective hand warmer based on heat, cost, and safety 
is 1 with calcium chloride. Error analysis. Sources of error while completing the experiment include human error when massing the substances and measuring out the milliliters of water. Though careful measurements were made to three significant figures, ideally we would carry them out to an infinite number. Also, because our calorimeter was an open system consisting of two nestled styrofoam cups as shown in figure two and not a closed system as pictured in figure one, heat was lost to the surroundings during the course of the experiment. In addition, heat was also lost to the styrofoam cup due to a lack of complete insulation or a cover. Since we are unable to measure the heat lost to surroundings in the scope of this class, this is a major source of error in our experiment. There are a couple different experiments that we could do in the future that are similar to the creating a hand warmer lab. The first is to create the same hand warming effect in a cup or thermos. This would work by shaking the thermos or cup to create the same exothermic reaction as found in a hand warmer in order to warm a food or drink. Another experiment that we've seen that we could do in the future is to create a hand cooler. Based on our experiment, there were two hand coolers, ammonium chloride and sodium chloride, and ammonium chloride would have acted as the best hand cooler because it had the largest endothermic reaction. But it would be interesting to see if there's a different salt that would be more cost effective. Citations. Citations for this presentation include the Flynn Scientific Online Lab Instructions as a reference for the experiment conducted and specifically the methodology. Other citations include Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDS, for the substances NH4Cl, CaCl2, LiCl, NaCH3CO2, and Na2CO3.